Today I'm going to be responding to a therapist on TikTok who basically claims that Christianity, Christian teaching is traumatic for people that are engaged in it. So it's not just people that call themselves Christians that do terrible things and cause trauma and hurt people. No, it's actually the teaching itself. This is a really interesting take that I haven't heard before. So let's watch this video and I'll comment on it. A lot of people don't understand religious trauma because people look at religious trauma through the lens of their religion and they will say things like it wasn't it wasn't the religion that traumatized you, it was the way it was taught. And that is simply not true. Simply understanding Christianity in and of itself is traumatizing. Understanding that there is a God that created everything and that if you don't listen to what he has to say, that you will burn in hell for eternity and you need a savior to keep that from happening. Internalization of that belief in and of itself, one, will cause anxiety because it creates a problem in you that can only be solved by something external from you. In fact, it starts off by telling you that you're born with an issue. So the trauma in religious trauma is simply understanding the religion. That's where the trauma comes from. You're in a constant state of worry. Jesus is, God, Jesus is coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. That sounds a lot like anxiety. This is really interesting to me. I want you to step back from the Christian worldview for a second and just imagine, okay, take this man's, uh, you know, point uh, to heart and say, okay, you know, Christianity is traumatic for people and the belief that the teaching itself, it's not good for people's hearts and not good for people's souls. So what are they to believe alternatively? Like, okay, outside of a God that created us, um, are you saying that no God created us? Are you saying that we're just kind of evolved protoplasm over millions and millions of years, that we have no intrinsic worth or dignity or value? You think that belief is better for people's mental health? Really? That's really, really concerning to me. Furthermore, in that worldview, how do you get any kind of sense of identity or love or, or truth? Like it's all just kind of subjective absurdity in that world. We're just animals. We're just chemical reactions. There's no kind of emotional security that can be found because, look, it's all just meaningless. I don't know about you, but that would send me into a mental death spiral very quickly. And so when I look at Christianity, when I look at the teachings of Christianity, uh, here's what I find, right? We, we find ourselves created in the image of God, right? And we're created and he calls us very good, but we've rebelled against him. So, but ultimately we have that security. Okay. First security in knowing that we're created in the image of God. That's good. But then there's a, a reality here that we have rebelled. And he says, this is going to cause anxiety. The fact that God, if we don't obey him or listen to his commands, we're going to be sent, sent sentence to hell. The question isn't, does that belief cause anxiety? The question should be, does that belief, is that belief true, right? Because if that belief is true, right? Then it should be something that we should take account for. We should, we should, okay, well, I need to do something about this. Think about this. The idea that, oh, if I walk across the street and I'm not looking both ways, that I could get hit by a car, um, that could cause anxiety. Absolutely. But the, the, but the, the solution to that is not believing that I won't get hit, but rather understanding, come to terms with, okay, this is the reality of the situation. This is the truth of the situation. And what can I do about it? What? Okay. I can look both ways. And so, here, this idea that we need to just expel any kind of belief that might cause anxiety or fear, it's like, no, no, not if this is the truth. And ultimately, we should have a fear of God and an understanding of, of his judgment and his wrath. A lot of people don't understand how could God judge people. And this is a little bit of a sidetrack, but how could God, you know, sen sentence people to hell? That just seems unreasonable or maybe just extreme. But when we understand God as a judge, like think of God as a judge, and you're standing before God and you're saying, okay, God, uh, you know, I realize I've done some bad stuff, right? I know I'm not the perfect person, but ultimately, like, I, I can walk old ladies across the street. I can do all these sorts of good things. Just kind of forgive me. And God looks at you and he says, well, no, I'm a good judge. I, you have to kind of serve the punishment for the crime. If I let you go, I'm not being good. And because God is infinitely holy, that means that the punishment that we deserve should be eternal death as well. But that what make, makes the beauty of the gospel um, so relevant to us is that God in his mercy sent Jesus, fully God and fully man, to die on the cross, the death we deserve to die for our sins against God, that we would be raised to newness of life, that we would find identity and security in him being adopted into his family. I think about the ramifications and the implications of actually 
understanding the gospel in its true light. There's so much security and identity to be found. The idea that I can be forgiven and the idea that I am a child of God created in his image, that I can't earn my own salvation, that I can't fix what is wrong with me, but rather somebody, God, has come and he's fixed it for me. He's done all the work for me. He says that it's it's a, a troubling thing to, to believe that you can't fix yourself, right? To, to need to look beyond yourself in order to fix what's wrong with you. I actually think that's a really comforting feeling because ultimately we know we don't have what we need in and of ourself, right? We can exist in denial or create excuses uh, for our sin and we can try to convince ourselves that we're okay, that we're at peace, but we don't have what we need on the inside to really find that peace, to find that acceptance. We need somebody external, somebody objective that can look at us and say, you are my child. You are forgiven. You don't need to strive anymore. This is your identity. When we try to manufacture that out of just nothingness, it's unstable. There's no really, no real concrete foundation. Now we need to talk about the fact that Christian teaching can be distorted and manipulated in such a way where it actually does cause emotional harm to us. And I've experienced that in terms of shame. So for so long, I kind of operated on this belief that I needed to earn God's love for me, that I needed to do something to prove that I was enough to God, that I needed to measure up. And ultimately what I was finding was I was falling short on every account, that I wasn't doing enough to, to merit God's favor. I wasn't enough as a person. I dwelled in insecurity and lack of self-confidence because I just had no concept that that I could be, be and do enough, right? And so then I just kind of wallowed in the shame, even as, as a Christian. But then understanding the truth of scripture was what freed me from that bondage of shame. It wasn't that, oh, you're perfect just the way you are, but rather, hey, even in the midst of your weaknesses, you can be secured in Christ because his righteousness is enough for you. He calls you his child. He delights over you. Like, can you believe that? He delights over you and he bears your burdens. He's bore your shame on the cross that you wouldn't have to bear that anymore, that you are invited into rest. These are the things that, that I've tried to internalize over the last few years that have really been a freeing process where somebody that's in an atheistic worldview, they're navigating shame or guilt. Um, the solution to that is just to dispel those feelings entirely to say, well, shame is just kind of a, a societal concept and, and guilt is just like morality is, is very subjective. And so uh, you really shouldn't feel guilt for anything in particular. You should just have, a, you know, radical acceptance of every behavior that you've ever had and disregard the shame as just meaningless. It's like, no, like actual, when, when we look at the truth of what God has done in our world, he set it up in such a way when we do sin, we experience a level of shame and guilt, and that causes us to look to God. But then when we are in Christ, when we do sin, that shame and guilt is designed to draw us back to God to reaffirm the fact that, hey, actually, this isn't me anymore right? This isn't who I am. Where before, when we were outside of, of Christ and we were, were sinning, it was a testimony to who we were. Now that we're in Christ, right? That shame and guilt is a testimony to the fact that this is not who we are. I am not this person anymore. I am in Christ. I am loved. I am forgiven. Like these are the truths that actually bring emotional healing. And when I think about it, I think um, when we talk about anxiety or any kind of like mental health or trauma, one of the most healing things is those things can only heal in relationship. They can only heal in, in safe community. And I think about the ultimate safe relationship is with God, right? He is the ultimate comforter. He is the ultimate um, father who can listen to the, the cries of our heart. And he affirms us in, in our identity. And that is a securing, that's a healing thing. If you're navigating shame, if you're navigating anxiety, if you're navigating depression, to have that perfect relationship. And then also within the, the body of Christ in general, having those relationships where we can say, hey, look, this isn't just my own opinion. This is what God says of you. That is powerful. Where in the atheistic worldview, it's just everybody's opinion. Hey, man, yeah, you're, you're good. Don't, don't feel so bad. You know, I, I know you're going through some stuff, but it's okay. Like, it's not a big deal. At the end of the day, um, we're just all stardust. Like, really? Is that emotionally 
more healing than realizing that God has created us and, and that he is with us and that, his, his, that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Don't believe the, the, the narrative that Christianity is just some cold, dusty old religion that has no really connection to our mo- emotional life. No, it does. God has things to say about it. The, all these beliefs, all these teachings, the truth of scripture has implications to how we see ourselves, how we operate in this world emotionally, how we navigate mental health. It's all connected. I hope you guys got something from this video. I hope you were encouraged in some way. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below about how you kind of navigate some of these more challenging emotional issues in light of scripture, in light of what Jesus has said about you. Um, I'd love to hear from you. A huge thank you to everyone on Patreon. You guys know um, this is my full-time gig. This is what I love to do. This is what I'm passionate about. You guys enable me to continue to make this content. I'm not big on accepting sponsors or doing promo deals. I want to focus on the heart of the content and by you guys signing up on uh, Patreon even today in the description down below, you can enable me to continue to do that. So thank you so much and I will see you guys next time. God bless.